Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are again joined by Megan Coy. Excited to have her here from Davenport, Iowa, and all the work she does with the Wellness Nook. And want to point out, she's a registered biodynamic cranial sacral therapist, licensed massage therapist, registered yoga teacher, and also the owner of the company, and so much more. So welcome back today, Megan. How are you? I'm doing good today. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic and great to see you here live on the Zoomcast as well. And for those that may not know who Miss Coy is, would you mind just telling us a little bit about what the Wellness Nook is all about and some of the services you provide? Sure. Uh, the Wellness Nook is my healing arts business. I think of it as a cozy, welcoming space to provide a safe space for healing. I offer therapeutic massage, uh, biodynamic cranial sacral therapy. I do Thai body work with a mixture of restorative yoga poses. I focus as well on prenatal and postnatal treatments for mothers and newborns. And I also have a variety of therapeutic uh, add-ons that I do in sessions I don't think of every session as a one size fits all sort of thing. So I have a lot of tools and techniques that I like to incorporate that may enhance the healing potential in a session. Uh, some of those are natural facial rejuvenation techniques, mm -hmm. cupping therapy, abdominal chi massage to check in with the internal organs a little bit more. Hot stones is such a nice, warming, relaxing thing to add as well. And I do in-person sessions. I do also offer long-distance sessions for the cranial sacral work and one-on-one uh, -on -one yoga therapy, yoga sessions as well. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. And how do we contact you? The website. My website is definitely yep. a great resource and way to find out more information and contact info. And that's the wellnessnookqc.com. Okay. I also have my email, which is info at the Wellness Nook QC. Instagram account is at the Wellness Nook QC and Facebook, the Wellness Nook. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And what did you have in mind for our listeners today? I thought today I would maybe talk a little bit more about what body work is. I think it's kind of a term that is an umbrella for many different things. Maybe just getting a, a grasp a little bit more on what that means when someone says that they do body work. And then I just kind of wanted to share a little bit of my journey with the body work path that I've been on. And more specifically, I haven't talked yet in our sessions about the Thai massage or Thai body work that I offer and just how it's evolved over the years in my own practice, thanks to other influences um, and offering these sessions that I think really are incorporate different things that do the are time massage, but also a little bit of extra things going on as well. So I'd share that. Uh, right. First off, body work itself is a term for natural therapies. It's a broad term that encompasses a variety of techniques that are used to manipulate the soft tissue in the body. And so some of the more popular forms of body work that you hear about are massage, uh, acupuncture, and chiropractic care. And those are so different from each other, yet they do their own things to help heal the body by actually doing some sort of physical manipulation, whatever that may look like. But the goal of all of those is to help relieve pain, improve circulation, and promote relaxation in the body. They can help with correcting structural imbalances or releasing endorphins, helping with stress relief. Uh, the goal as well for all of them is to a combination of helping to bring a sense of relaxation and peace to the body, but also the mind. And Thai massage falls under this term of body work as well. And I've been a yoga teacher for many years. Gosh, my training was back in 2008. And that was kind of the first uh, 
healing arts modality that I that I dove into and I just love the philosophy behind yoga and you know just through teaching it through the years it's just continuous learning process and so eventually when I knew I was going to be going to school for body work I knew that when I was done with that massage training that I wanted to train in Thai massage pretty much right away afterwards because of its connection that it has with yoga. Uh, Thai massage is sometimes termed lazy person's yoga just because you get to lay there and relax and someone is actually taking your body and putting you into these nice stretches and you just get to receive and lay there and actually kind of get to go a little bit deeper into these stretches than you would normally get to on your own just with that assistance of someone else helping you. Um, So anyways, after I was done with my massage school, I found a place to train in Thai massage in the Denver, Colorado area with the Institute of Thai Massage is what it was called. And I did two trainings right away, level one and level two. And my teachers were awesome. It was a husband and wife team who had been teaching for a long time, at least over a decade. They've been to Thailand several times and they really embodied the tradition of Thai massage. And if someone's not familiar with what Thai massage directly entails, just a little history of it is that it's been a part of the Thai medical system for, uh, it dates back to about 2,500 years ago. I guess a physician that was also the physician to the Buddha back in the day uh, came up with you know, certain stretches and techniques to kind of help complement other medical things that they did to keep a person's system healthy. And over the years, it's been influenced by uh, different healing and medical systems from India and China and different parts of Southeast Asia. and. It's wow. now so ingrained. I don't know if you've been to Thailand before. No, no, but I've heard so many amazing stories and I, I would love to hear more because I that's on my bucket list for sure. Yeah. yeah. After my training in Denver, probably I think the next year, uh, I convinced my, not to convince them, but I, I wanted to go to Thailand and actually do some training as well and just experience the country because I was just really loving the work and really loving the connection of not just the physical part of doing Thai massage, but also the spiritual connection that they have with their, just with everything that they do, but combining, you know, a sense of spirituality with your medicine and your healthcare, it just, I thought was awesome. And I would love to experience that in person. So uh, we spent six weeks in Thailand And I did a couple of trainings in Northern Thailand, but anywhere that you go in the country, you can, there's just Thai massage, Thai body work. It's offered on just every street corner, on every block. It's just so integrated into their culture that, you know, people, Thai people go and receive it, you know, once a week or more. I don't even really know, but it is um, just such a big part of their way of living there. And I just think that is so amazing because that's not necessarily how it is here in the U.S. We kind of think of our healthcare as having to go to a doctor most of the time and finding out, you know, what's wrong with you or if you are healthy. But there it's definitely a part of just a, a maintenance of of keeping a healthy system. And so I did this two beautiful trainings in Chiang Mai. Oh my goodness. In Northern Thailand with this school called Blue Lotus. And one of them was called Dynamic Rocking Thai Massage. And it's be kind of become kind of this newer uh, thing to incorporate into Thai massage. Traditional Thai massage includes, you know, traditionally in Thai medicine, sessions are like two hours or longer. Uh, here, that's been kind of scaled back to maybe an hour to 90 minutes of, of Thai massage uh, here in the West, but it incorporates the person laying on a mat, fully clothed and comfortable clothing, and the practitioner is 
centering into themselves and into the clients and then doing these assisted stretches, yoga like stretches, or even going into different yoga poses and then helping to assist in doing some stretches during that. And then there's also a lot of work on with acupressure. So following what in Thai massage, they are these energy lines that run through the body called Sen lines. And they're these invisible energy lines that relate very closely to um, meridian lines in Chinese medicine. But essentially you're doing these acupressure points along these lines, along the major parts of the body, the arms, the legs, uh, the inside, the outsides of those through the head, the chest, even down into the abdomen. And the theory of working in these lines is you're helping to clear out any energetic blockages that the body may have, helping imbalances, disease, toxins to to start to move through and out of the body. There's also a lot of work on the joints, uh, joint compression work, and helping to improve flexibility with the whole session. It's also known to help bring a sense of strength into the muscles and also to help promote relaxation and and well-being and so it's just a real I when I first received Thai massage I was just I loved it and really I'm not was, for can, what is Thai massage could you just share a little bit about more about the specifics of yeah, what, what so, it is I've never had one <laughs> yeah oh and I highly recommend you try it especially if you do enjoy body work but it's it's performed on the floor on a, on a mat I have this really comfy mat that I used. You're kind of wearing yoga clothes or comfortable clothing that you can move around in. And then you just get to relax. And then whoever the practitioner is, I'm just helping to to move the body around into different stretches. I kind of work the legs first, the arms. Uh, you can turn around on the, and I can work the backside of the body. And it's kind of using my whole body in a session. So yeah, I'm using my hands for sure. But there's also moves where I'm using my feet uh, to help get in to different areas. And and just over the years, as I've done different trainings, I just have a bunch of different stretches, uh, things that I can do that can help work on certain areas that may need a little bit more focus. Um, But that dynamic rocking training that I took in Thailand was a game changer for me. And that philosophy is I'm yeah, still doing the Thai massage, but I'm learning how to like rock that person's body as I'm doing it and in different ways. And so it's kind of, you think of as it kind of is a little bit more, adds a level of nurturing to the session. I think of rocking as you can go all the way back into when you were in your mother's womb and we're in that fluid and you know those first nine months of our lives we're just kind of rocking in this water and so we it's in our in our system and maybe not even realizing that when we're able to or needing to relax a little bit more that rocking can actually help us deepen into that relaxation and so adding this to the Thai massage sessions to me was really great. Um, I really resonated with it. When I got to receive it, I was like, wow, this is a whole different ball game. Yeah, the time it's different beast. And, this is great. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And so I actually found myself incorporating some of that rocking philosophy into my other therapies that I, I offer into the table massage. Um, mm-hmm cranial sacral work. Sometimes I will use it, even though that's a very subtle therapy where I'm just doing gentle holds on the body. Sometimes I can feel that there's an area that is pretty stuck and energetically and just making sure that person's okay with it and just doing some gentle rocking motions into that. I find very beneficial helping. So that training helped influence the rest of my work as well. And just going to Thailand and getting to receive Thai massage all the time I just um yeah I just really enjoy that work and and how it's evolved and so after that trip to Thailand came back and was was offering it my practice and really excited about it and then fast forward I think maybe two or three years after that I ended up in this training um in 
Salt Lake City, which is a few hours from where I was living in a modality called Yo Massage. And this was with some women from Portland, Oregon that came up with combining a gentle restorative yoga class. And while you're in these restorative yoga poses, getting really supported and then doing hands-on massage work during the class. So they're small classes so that you have time to put your hands on every person during the class. And it was it's a really neat thing that they did. And I was excited to take the training. And I happened to have two friends from my same small town I was living in, in the training as well. I didn't know that they were going to be taking it. So we took this training together and felt like we wanted to offer these classes back in Moab, Utah, where I was living then. And so we started offering them and we got really good feedback and and we were doing them. And then at some point we felt like they could even be a little bit more. And because I doing Thai massage, I'm like, oh, we could add in some really cool Thai stretches during these classes. And so we had to drop the Yo Massage name because that's a registered trademark and you have to kind of do what they um, taught us in these classes and we kind of evolved them into more of our own thing. So incorporating some Thai massage stretches with restorative yoga and a little bit more movement in the classes. And we just got a really, really good response with them. And then another kind of light bulb went off in my head where I was like, how could I incorporate some of this into my one-on-one sessions with Thai massage and body work? And so that led to really feeling like during Thai massage, if I could also take time for the person to get into a restorative yoga pose where they're supported with a bolster or blocks in certain places and let them hang out there for a few minutes, I can do some hands-on massage and then, and then continue on from there. And that also got a really good response. And I think that is a good combination of, of doing stuff in a body work session Yes, manipulating the body and the soft tissue, but also taking time for them to undo and settle into a, a pose and feel really supported and and not feel like something has to be getting done all the time. Um, and so that's a kind of another involvement of of what happened with with those Thai sessions. So now I do call it Thai body work with restorative yoga because I feel like adding incorporating those poses into the bodywork sessions are are extremely beneficial and um so that's kind of where I am today with with offering those sessions as well all right well thank you for that by the way the wellness nook qc.com aha uh-huh, that's the website <laughs> got to remind everyone of that and how to reach out to you. And um, I know we're talking mostly today about body work, but there's also the um, craniosacral therapy you touched upon. There's pre postnatal baby care too. Uh, really, there's a lot that you, you can offer. Um, and uh, for, you know, the rest of today's show, what else in particular do you think is important for your listeners to know? Um, and by the way, just got to mention you're in Davenport, Iowa. So obviously a lot of these approaches, techniques are hands-on, right? Um, but is there any that you do virtually to others uh, anywhere else? Yeah. So the craniosacral work can be done long distance wise. That was kind of discovered during the pandemic with uh, a lot of cranial sacral therapists and, you know, most body workers finding themselves without clients for a little while. And I think a lot of experimentation happened and um, it was found that the cranial sacral is very, is just as beneficial uh, as in person. And so I've done a lot of work with honing my skills in on the long distance cranial session, cranial sacral sessions as well. So that can be offered long distance through Zoom or even over the phone. And I just had a really lovely session the other day with, I relocated to Davenport, Iowa within the last six months. I moved from Utah. I grew up here in in Iowa and so moved closer back to family. And so some of my clients back in Moab, you know, we had a great relationship and thing going. And so now I do distance sessions with them with the cranial sacral work. And wow, just things that come up in those sessions are, are just like something that would happen in person. And so it can be 
Yeah, oh, great. It's I'm excited to offer that in my practice as well. And that information can be found on my website, thewellnessnookqc.com. Yay. And just a little bit uh, to dive into about, you know, yourself, uh, if you don't mind sharing, um, you know, you mentioned the relocation, right? And what were you doing before this? You know, how did you first learn about this type of modality? Would you mind sharing? Because I know you were into yeah. healing arts for some time. Yes. Uh, in my early 20s, when I decided to move away from Iowa is moving out west and kind of finding my first experience in a yoga class that was in Colorado and just really resonating with what that entails. And I had never really, you know, I was way active in exercising and all this, but I never really considered that connection of tuning into your mind as well as your body. And so that kind of was the catapult of my interest in and what uh, healing arts is. And so I immediately took a yoga teacher training uh, shortly after that year in Colorado and just you know started teaching when what capacity that looked like. In the meantime, I was also still moving around doing seasonal work. I went back to university in Montana for environmental science, but at the same time I was teaching yoga on this side. And really interested in massage therapy. I received massage therapy somewhat regularly since my early 20s as well, just because I was so active and I knew that it could be a good thing to to do for the body. And so I always loved receiving massage therapy. And there was a point where I was like, oh, I might be interested in doing this for work, but I've just always had so much else going on. And then eventually I landed in Moab, Utah, and it was really amazing. Uh, as soon as I kind of settled in there, you know, I was I was teaching yoga. I was also working on a farm, and I met some friends that that were massage therapists, and really encouraged me if that was something I was interested in to do the school that they did in a that wasn't too far away, but it was a little bit more flexible where I didn't have to move somewhere to go to school for massage and come back and. Um, so I did this training with that, that they recommended. And then I just opened my own business. And then it just, you know, my interests are always evolving. And I'm always thirsting for knowledge in whatever it is that I want to be offering in my life. And so that's just led to many different trainings in yoga and body work, uh, the cranial sacral work, I found my teacher while I was living in, in Moab and did a three-year program with that. And just, and realizing like, yes, the body work, the manipulating physically of the body is really beneficial, important for so many things, but also subtle work and just getting to undo sometimes and just drop into stillness and help people settle their nervous systems in order for even deeper releasing and trauma to let go in, in a person's body to me was, was uh, really fascinating and I find very important to do. So I, I'm now focusing more on that cranial sacral therapy as well as the body work. And, yeah. and I love it all. And they yeah. can combine those as well. You know, some people don't want to have the massage work, they just want the more energetic, subtle work. Some people like them both, you know, and everyone's on their own path to healing. And so you resonate with different things at different times in your life. So I want to be is, able to offer all of those things <laughs> at any time. The word path, which is one of the quotes I was going to read uh, from your website, you say, um, I view the path to wellness not as a straight line, but as a spiral. It is a continuous commitment of understanding and meeting your needs with compassion and grace wherever you are on the journey. I view each session together as a chance to open up new possibilities and growth on your circular path to radiant health. Uh, love it, love it, love it. And we still got to, two more minutes left today here, so I don't want to cut you short ever. Uh, what else did you want to share about the wellness nook and uh, why people should reach out? Did you want to share a story or two or you tell me? Yeah, you know, I think that I would love for anyone to reach out, especially if you're in 
the Davenport, Iowa area, which is a part of a larger metro area called the Quad Cities. So it does encompass a little bit um, larger population of people. So if you are closer to Davenport and are interested in just having a conversation, reach out. I offer free 15 minute consultations just to chat about, you know, what you're interested in or how I may be able to assist you with that. Um, again, the distance sessions are available and I have many stories on, on things that come up in those that, that we've had amazing sessions, you know, distance wise energy is, is transmutable and it can be tuned in from, from anywhere, which is just fascinating. And, um, yeah, I would just love, love to connect in any way. If you're resonating with anything that has been talked about today or any of the previous episodes. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. Uh, by the way, Mallory says she's been going to you for years. You've done a great job of making um, her feel better uh, all around, but most importantly with helping her regulate the seizures she has since a car accident. And that was over 20 years ago. So whatever you're doing for her in particular, she's gracious for uh, massage therapy from Susan, uh, Susan uh, Bifico and biodynamic craniosacral practice sessions. She's been going to you for years, loves all these different modalities and all the things you incorporate into each sessions. And they say you're very grounded, calm, and you have the most healing hand. So compliments to you. And thank you again for being mm -hmm. here. So the wellnessnookqc.com is the best, best way we can reach you? Yes. All yeah. right. Well, thank you for being here. Always a pleasure having you. And thank you for sharing more about body work today. Always appreciate it mm -hmm. and enjoy your week. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.